What's going on everybody, C4, welcome back to the channel, and today we are here for the Vancouver Grizzlies offseason. Year one offseason. Now the offseason is not as exciting in, the, in in pink slips as it is in a traditional franchise. In traditional franchises, you can go off free agency, that's where you're going to make big time moves to improve your squad. Uh, we kind of just sit free agency, yeah, we're going to be just more so hoping that, like, especially teams within the division, the Colts, the Titans, the Texans... These guys are signing big name free agents, you know, ups the pool of players we could potentially win within the division. But the draft, a little bit different. Usually the draft's also not that important in pink slips, but we have a full, realistic 2022 updated as of like a couple days ago draft class that has also a couple Canadian prospects sprinkled in. And I'm excited for this. Get some real players, get some, you know, I, and I've, we're, absolutely in best player scenario bpa for a lot of our draft picks now that being said there are you know we're not going to overdraft canadians it's not going to be one of those things like oh c4 had some canadian players sprinkled in they're going to be juiced and they're going to be like no they're just there in case like there's no like the, it could be a tiebreaker like if i'm down to well obviously this one here we got john mechie which is insane that you know debatably the best debate well not debatably jameson williams kind of took over but coming into this season the fact that Debatably, a Canadian was the best wide receiver on the best offense on the best team in college football is absolutely absurd to me. But like, yeah, you know, I might try and force Messi. I don't think I'll get him in the first round unless the first round is completely depleted. And looking at the board, you know, we we should have a good opportunity to draft him in the second round. Another guy that I know I want to target is uh, Jesse Lucada, the linebacker from Penn State. He's a day three pick. So again, you know, we might draft those guys around early. But other than that, man, I need. I, we're not gonna we're not gonna hamper our team. We're not gonna pen, you know, kind of stick ourselves in a corner here by just saying we have to. I want I want the best players available. I want guys that have dev trace. I want guys that are gonna be able to take this team to the next level, and we're gonna be able to do so in this draft. So the draft's gonna be exciting. Free agency, not so much. I'm I'm just rooting for the teams within our division. Um, I mean, well, what I said, we 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 haven't really done a proper end of season look at our team stats, see who did what and get to figure out well we see how the rest of the league keeps moving on who ends up going to the super bowl winning the super bowl as we clear our lockers we get to see based upon these stats we're about to look at if we have any player going up dev trade because that would be pretty good if that can happen obviously so look at the big picture here 51 touchdowns from Holmes, Taysom hill things i did not expect to see Taysom hill we got dante harris 120 catches you know Deontay Harris and Russell Gage is the two of the top three wide receivers. That's all you really need to know. 22 sacks from Tank Lawrence, 21 for DeForest Buckner. We got seven picks. Amani Awariye. Got the Eagle TJ Edwards, their top three in tackle leaders. But let's look at what we did here for the Vancouver Grizzlies. A little bit of a reflection period. So at quarterback Trey Lance, we got him late. He didn't play for the 49ers before we won, so his stats are literally what he did since we brought him over. And, you know, we got us, you know, most of our season came from Streveler. He was 13. Like, you know, I, I will say on the sticks, Streveler felt a little bit better than what we've got out of Trey Lance, but not not much. And we obviously know the upside with Trey Lance is high. So um, I'm excited to see what kind of jump Trey Lance can take from year one to year two. Right in the ball. Chuba Hubbard was very good for us, averaging almost 80 yards a game, and that is with Sim behind a bad offensive line 1300 yards 11 touchdowns he was the heart and soul of the offense here uh, i think when it comes down to it. because the passing offense is so inconsistent we can usually rely on chuba hubbard to get us those 79 80 yards and a touchdown a game which is pretty damn tough given the state of our team against the defenses that we've gone up against this season uh for receiving 61 catches thousand yards five touchdowns for claypool 87 catches for Kellen Benjamin leading our team. 900 yards, three touchdowns. Brandon Ayuk. Most of those numbers were with the 49ers before we acquired his services. But he's almost a thousand yard guy. Josh Palmer. That was all with us. He was a. Uh, he missed some games due to injury, which is unfortunate. But for being really the third option on our team, finishing with 700 yards, five touchdowns. You can build off that. Chuba Hubbard out the backfield, almost 400 yards, two touchdowns. These are solid numbers. I will take these numbers every day of the week. Uh, on the blocking standpoint, well, these are what it's kind of look like. The fact that like you could look at our Eagles franchise. Our Eagles franchise couldn't be any more different than this franchise, at least as it relates to the offensive line. The Eagles franchise, we got Mylotta, who's like 83, left guard. We got Landon Dickerson, who's, I don't know at this point, probably 79, 80. You have Kelsey, who's 94. 
You have Brandon Brooks, who's like a 90. You have Lane Johnson, that's a 90. And the sack numbers look pretty much exactly the same. Like Jackson here is 50, 58. We got Dakota Shepley's 53. Like the fact that these guys, it's just copy and paste. It really doesn't feel like, you know, these sack numbers take into account talent level. And it just, I guess it is what it is. It's just the, the, the nature of the beast here in Madden franchise. Look at the defense. Three players going over 100 tackles. Alex Singleton was a tackle machine. 147 tackles, 15 TFLs, three sacks. And interception 106 from a Glovin, 106 for Justin Reed. I'll be honest, Justin Reed, I actually was very disappointed with him. I feel like the fact that he was like our first big premier player that we won when we beat the Houston Texans early, you just feel like he didn't make plays for us. One interception, and I'm not gonna say like you know, you just as a safety gotta make those plays, especially when Javon Hall and his partner in crime got six freaking picks. But I literally like I can't recall any big play Justin Reed made for us, which is unfortunate because he's a really good player. Uh, sacks, we had nine sacks, Jalen Phillips, and he just really caught on fire the last couple weeks. So I'm excited to see him take that to the next level. Most of those sacks did come with us. Eight sacks, Eric Armstead, 13 TFLs. We have six sacks, Eva Gallimore, five for Sam Hubbard. Want to do better. You know, I, I still feel like, you know, no double digits there in the sack department. But again, we, we saw in the last couple episodes, especially when we're on the sticks, Jalen Phillips, it's heating up. I, I think he's going to have a big year too. And on the interception front, the Canadian, Javon Holland. One of the stars, you know, as much as Chuba Hubbard on offense, we get Javon Holland on defense, six picks. That is sensational. Uh, he did get at least three of those in the sim. I remember he had two picks in one sim game. So, uh, I think that actually might have been the Bengals victory. So, you know, it wasn't like we were cheesing. It wasn't like I was usering him or anything crazy like that. He was just very good. Three picks, Caleb Farley. Three from Nick Marshall, which is kind of surprising. He's one of those guys that came over from the CFL. A couple singles there. I was happy with the turnovers. Uh, kicking department, 86% for Harulahu. Very good. He's reliable. Reliable kicker. I'm fine with that. Rock and roll with him as kicker in the next year. We have 15 gongs for Tai Long on 59 punts, which obviously the, the averages are going to be skewed. It's not like the Eagles franchise where we're playing every game. It's not like I have you know, had to punt 59 times. A lot of those came in games that we were simming. And just imagine some of those blows that we had as well. So I'll take 15 gongs. I wonder how that stacks up against the rest of the league. Let's look at that. Um, okay. He's up there, man. Tied for third in gongs. Pretty good. On the kicking side. Harulahu, most field goals made. Cool, that could be could be a Pro Bowl. Could be. Defensively, Bobby Wagner. So Alex Singleton was the runner-up for total tackles. TFL leader goes to DeForest Buckner. And sack leader, as we saw, goes to Demarcus Lawrence. Interceptions, almost Javon Holland, runner-up. To Amani Aruarie. Uh, again, hopefully another potential dev trade increase right there for Javon Holland. Uh, D, let's go to receiving. This is just ridiculous. Seeing Russell Gage, those guys right there. I wonder for receptions where our guy, where our tight end finished. Do we have, okay, Jared Cook had 91, Kelsey at 89, Dawson Knox 89, Hunter Henry 88, Kelvin Benjamin 87. So, Statistically speaking, Kelvin, top five. Fringe top five tight end this year. Great redemption story. Awesome redemption story. Exactly what you want to see. For the running backs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just outside looking in for the top ten running backs. Again, he's a rookie, though. So excited to see the strides he can take in year two. Number 11, the 11th ranked running back in the NFL is Chuba Hubbard. So a quick look at the yearly awards. Who actually won what? Patrick Mahomes is your MVP in the AFC. Patrick Mahomes is your Offensive Player of the Year. Defensive Player of the Year went to DeForest Buckner. Offensive Rookie of the Year went to Najee Harris. Chuba Hubbard coming in at number three. Defensive Rookie of the Year went to Javon Holland. Awesome. Love seeing that. Jalen Phillips coming in at number three. Caleb Farley at number six. I mean, that's also another thing that's just the nature of pink slips is that Especially when you start out on pink slips, the best players you usually end up acquiring are rookies because those are the guys that are going to be in those like mid 70s that are easily upgradable from some of your own players and that you're going to want to get because of their upside and or dev traits. So we had three guys on the defensive rookie of the year short list, Javon Holland being the winner with his six interceptions. Best running back, Jonathan Taylor. Chuba Hubbard at seven. Best wide receiver went to Jarvis Landry. Best lineman, okay, we're definitely not having anybody there. Best D lineman went to DeForest Buckner. Best linebacker went to TJ Watt. Alex Singleton coming in at number eight. Best DB straight up goes to Javon Holland. 
Yes, sir. Love seeing that. And best kicker. What? Harulahu got absolutely robbed. Number eight. He made the most. He made the most points this season. Just put some respect on his name. All right. So we kind of looked at the stats. We know who did what. Now we got to get through the playoffs here and see if we get any depth trade increases, as well as find out who's winning the Super Bowl here in year one. Two Vancouver Grizzlies are representing the team in the Pro Bowl. Middle linebacker one, starting middle linebacker in the Pro Bowl is Alex Singleton for the AFC. And starting strong safety is Javon Holland, our lone two players. I thought there would have been a chance maybe for uh, Kelvin Benjamin to make it, but he must have been first guy out. So we got 93 staff points here for old Doug Peterson. Probably should have been spending those, to be honest with you. Uh, but let's work our way down the old tree here. Get the big upgrade, which is the final piece, one of the biggest and like, you know, placeholder for me. It's like, you gotta get that. Getting the final piece, getting after school tutoring. Those are the big two. And then I, I honestly, if I had to rank like the third best one, especially for, you know, it doesn't really relate to this one. I always like feels like home because it gives you that extra boost signing free agent. And it's a broad boost because it makes scheme fits just gives you a couple more points when you want to try to bring them in. But you know, we got these two done. Training also could definitely help us out with Trey Lance. So I think we have 28. So let's get the XP gains for quarterback because, you know, developing Trey Lance is important. Uh, you know, this one, receptions galore, 20% XP boost for our receivers, running backs, and O-line. Like, those are honestly, like, that's the next 60 points. I think I'm just going to spend right there, and we'll get the head coaching tree all complete. Now, it is time to see. Do we have any dev traits? Did anybody go up? Did anybody go down? Uh, the Super Bowl is the Bucks and Chiefs. Eh. So it's really like a who cares? That's popular copy and paste type team. Not overly exciting. Get to see Brady. Get to see Mahomes run it back. I suppose that could be could be entertaining if you're a fan of one of those teams. And I don't want to go through the upgrades right yet because I'll probably spoil if we have any dev traits. So on the offensive side of the ball, any dev trade increases. Let's take a look here. Holy shit. Was Trey Lance a superstar, Dev? Why is he superstar? The more you know, I did not know Trey Lance was a superstar Dev player. I feel like I did know, and then I just assumed they nerfed him down a little bit because he was, been, let's be honest, but a little bit underwhelming in real life. Um, okay. That's sick. The rest of our team, no dev traits on the offense anyway. I, I thought Kelvin Benjamin with the receptions might have had a chance to go up star. But uh, Trey Lance, that, that's pretty much getting a dev trait because I thought Trey Lance almost 100% was a star dev. Defensively, what do we got here? Um, Javon Holland didn't go up dev trait, man. What? I don't think we had a single dev trait increase. John Holland as a rookie, six picks. Defensive rookie of the year. DB of the year. And no dev trade increase. That's shocking. I, I don't, like between him and Single, I thought for sure we'd have two. I thought Javon Holland would be superstar, Alex Singleton would be star. We got nothing. Super Bowl went to the Tampa Bay box. Brady still runs the NFL. And look at that, right at the bottom. Javon Holland. No dev. So at the beginning of the offseason, you have your retirements. Couple of retirements for players that obviously we probably would be super familiar with. There were the veteran CFL players. Adam Big Hill, Landon Rice, Stanley Bryant, and David Menard have all retired from the NFL. Free agency, looking at some of the top free agents, knowing that we could sign any and all of them because there is no salary cap. It's always just, you know, it's window shopping. Ah, like, like Devontae Adams would be unreal. Even even a punter, Jack Fox. Like, that's almost where I want to spend my money. Just give me an unreal punter. But that's not how this works. Because I'd be cheating. That'd be not in the spirit of pink slips. So as it stands right now, um, you know, we're just, we're just going to go to the draft. I mean, you look at that. Deontay Harris, the best wide receiver in the NFL. No bids on him. Statistically speaking, he's right there. But we have all the Canadian, like, there's not like there's some Canadian I couldn't obtain or anything like that. It's just, uh, you know, hopefully some of these top guys, like, the, the interesting thing, we're going to sim to the end of free agency. 
We don't want to look for the Colts. We got to look for signings from the Texans. We got to look for signings from the Jaguars. We want those three teams to be aggressive so that the pool of players that we can potentially win twice a season grow substantially. All right, let's take a look here. Final mock draft just to see what kind of player they're they're projecting us to land. We got Hutchinson, Neal, Thibodeau, Stingley, yada yada. We got Sauce Gardner. I, I'll take I'll take Sauce Gardner to be completely honest with you. And the guys that are still available, Sauce Gardner, Carl. Every time from here on out, at least as it relates to Madden, I see Carl Aftis. I'm gonna think about the Denver Broncos rebuild. If you missed the Denver Broncos rebuild, go watch it. I'll pause for the spoiler for one second. We got 27 sacks with Carl Aftis in it, and it, it was it was insane. Probably like one of the best sim seasons I've ever seen in a rebuild of any Madden ever. So he's ingrained himself that way. But I, hey, Sauce Gardner's on the board. I'll 100%. Be all over Sauce Gardner. Uh, even though right now sauces taste weird post COVID for some reason. Ketchup tastes weird. People on Twitter said something with vinegar. Uh, I'll take sauce. All right, let's look at free agency. We want to look again. Colts, Jags, Titans. Want to see these guys be aggressive? Let's look at the league signings here. And Devonte Adams went to the Colts. Okay. Rob Gronkowski went to the Colts. Trent Brown went to the Texans. Marcus Williams went to the Texans. Jesus, okay. I didn't expect that many top talent. Will Fuller going back to the Houston Texans. We have Jacoby Myers going to the Colts. Uh, Garyon Conley going to the Colts. Uh, Cam Robinson going to the Col Colts. Spending a lot of money. Dean Lowry. We got Quan Alexander. My God. Tracy Walker going to the Texans. Eric Wilson going to the Texans. Uh, Kilo Witherspoon going to the Texans. We're not going to go all the way down. Kiki Kute. Colts are very big. I did not think. But also they have a lot of salary cap. That's also not shocking that the Colts in particular were very aggressive. But hey, that's kind of what we hope for. It's it, You know, it's it sucks in a way because they're very good now. The Colts are already pretty solid, pretty tough to beat. And they're just going to be that much more tough. But those are nice names for us in potential. Like Marcus Williams... There's, there, you know, we if we get a one star, there's there's a nice upgrade right there to go from Justin Reed to Marcus Williams. Like I like that that's on the board right now. I like the fact that not so much Gronk, but Devontae Adams in the division, there could be a plus twenty here or there, and I can bring in Devontae Adams. So that'd be pretty dope. And it looks like it was a very low bid that won Devontae Adams as well. Okay, division got a lot tougher. Let's go crush this draft. All right, we'll go through every pick up to us because we, we don't we're not waiting that long. We're ready to pick ten. So first overall, Aiden Hutchinson to the Houston Texans. Philadelphia drafts Evan Neal, which you know what? Even given the state of their offensive line, I could Lane's. You know, I if Philly had picked two and three and they got Evan Neal and Kayvon Thibodeau, I'd be annoyed because we don't need an O lineman. But I'd understand with Evan Neal because that's probably BPA. That might be BPA in the draft. All right, names are just flying up the board. Kyle Hamilton's gone. Charles Cross. And then a pick nine, Matt Corral. So now we're sitting here at pick 10. Let's get full clarity over our roster. Like, where, like, Sauce Gardner's on the board. He was the guy that was mocked to us. I feel like that could be a smart investment. Um, I would love to get Mechie. I'm, I'm going to try to get Mechie in the second round. Pick, especially with picking pick 10 in the second round. I'm almost certain that we'll be able to get John Mechie in the second round. We don't even need him. But that will be like the one liberty I take because he's a really good Canadian football player. Outside of that, I mean, our tight end doesn't look good, but it's Kelvin Benjamin, so we're not worried about that. Uh, you could always go on the O-line, center, right guard, right tackle. Those would be top positions. You flip to the defense. Defense a lot better than our offense in terms of guys with higher ceilings. I think you could go middle linebacker, and there's a guaranteed pick of the litter between Devin Lloyd and Kobe Dean. Uh, but then again, as you go to the secondary, yeah, we need that third corner. St. Juice and Farley can, can be solid for the time being. But that third corner would be very important. So, yeah, I think we're going to... I mean, we'll look at the O-line. We just saw a lot of tackles come off the board, though. So let's make our pick. Fine with Sauce Gardner. David Ojabu's still there. Devin Lloyd. Kenny Pickett. Ahmad Sauce Gardner. Um, Linderbaum. I mean, Linderbaum would be would be a nice pick. That's just not a sexy selection by any, any stretch of the imagination. The linebackers there are pretty good. Yeah, no, we're we're gonna have to we're gonna have to pull the trigger here. And get Sauce Gardner. Plus his name, Sauce Gardner. 
right? Look at those stats. B catching, C man, A press, A zone. Let's bring him in. Hidden Dev Ahmad Gardner from the Cincinnati Bearcats. Welcome to Vancouver. We are now here in the second round. Oh, that's frustrating. No, that, you know, as much as I love John Betchy, I don't think you'd pick Olave and or I mean maybe Pickens in that range, but we got I'm just gonna do it. We can't think about it. John Betchy. D catching, what? I disagree with that. At least he has a hidden dev. I don't know these ratings at all. This is a roster, a draft class that was created, and I've never used it before. Uh, happy with the dev trait, not happy with D catching. Day to the third round, I think I'm gonna grab the last kid. There's no one that's screaming. Like, I was thinking maybe Jackson Kirk, like one of these tackles, and we could slick him to the right. Ah, uh, will they still be there, man? I don't know if Luke had, I'm, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be annoyed to burn that. There's still three other players there. We got to I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually grab I'm gonna we're gonna grab Jackson Kirkland here first and hopefully we can get Luquette on the back swing of things Hidden dev baby. Let's go Jackson Kirkland the tackle from Washington. We're gonna kick him to the right hand side I right, go to the fourth round hoping Luquetta is still there the Canadian from Penn State He is yes, sir third rounder day three. Let's go Jesse Luquetta normal dev don't care Happy with it. Get our two top Canadian prospects on top of, what, three hidden dev guys so far? All right, next up, I want to get a running back two to Chuba Hubbard. Uh, I don't know how many times I just saw Stanbeck come in, and I was upset. So we have Damian Pierce, who I'm a massive fan of from Florida. Florida Gators, very good, very underrated running back. So we'll bring him in to be running back two. All right, we are going into the fifth round now. I'm going to grab another Canadian. City Sal from Eastern Michigan is a right guard, has a chance. Our right guard spot's not great. And you know, any other opportunity to get a Canadian? And he's, yeah, let's, let's go. <laughs> Italy brought back Ty Long. Uh, the board's pretty slim, and why not get the guy with the biggest leg? Might not be the best punter. I think Rutgers, Rutgers punter was better, but... I'm almost certain he'll have 99 kick power. Should have 99 kick power. Let's bring him in. Legatron. Yes, sir. Legatron from San Diego State. Taking that. I think he's going to take that mantra over from uh, Greg Zerline. All right. At this point, we're just trying to like almost go BPA. And the fact, Wandale Robinson, very versatile gadget type player, still on the board. Let's grab him. Big time speed. Big time playmaking ability. And those are the kind of guys we want in the building. All right, so now it's time for the draft recap. See what the ratings look like. Again, no idea. I had no idea coming any dev traits, any ratings. So it's generally kind of exciting to finally have a draft class that's real players that I'm just taking swings at and seeing what we could get. We got a couple generous dev traits for sure. Don't know what the ratings are going to really look like. Hopefully they match up. Uh, again, not, not even really sure what the rating scale this guy uses for his draft classes. Ooh, a lot of 60s. It's fine. We can work with that. So Sauce Gardner at pick 10. He is 75. Hates coming to Canada. Hates the idea. Okay, that's not great. But 75, hidden dev. We can work with that. Uh, got to be, you know, starting corner for us. Play on one side. You got to have probably St. Juice in the slot. And we'll have Farley on the other side. So two good athletes. We got John Metchie in the second round. 69, hidden dev. Hates coming here. That's fine. Would have liked the, you know, the Canadian guy to be happy coming back to Canada. That D catching though. 77. Yikes, got some work to do. Uh, he will be wide receiver four, maybe compete for wide receiver three. Uh, Jackson Kirkland at left tackle, 66. Got the hidden dev. We're going to do it right now. He is going to be coming in to be our right tackle. Laurent Duverday Tardif is our starting left tackle as it stands. So that's pretty cool for him, though. Getting that hidden dev is nice on the offensive line. Jesse Lucada, another Canadian linebacker. Uh, normal dev, but 66. Nice. He can come in and compete. And for our team, we're going to make him a middle linebacker. I usually, when you move an outside linebacker to middle linebacker, the rating takes just a little bit of a hit. But given the, the style that Lucado is, it might not be too severe, which it's not. Then we got Damian Pierce from Florida. Gators, baby. Not the best, not, you know, not cheesy. Not really crazy. I'm telling you right now, probably should have higher, you know, trucking stiff iron break tackle. But that's just a little bit Gator. But excited to get him in as running back two. We got another Canadian here in City Sal at right guard, 63, but he did surprise us with a hidden dev trade. So that is really nice, and that's a day one plug and play upgrade at that right guard spot over Bo Benchwale. Holy shit. Legatron, 80 overall for a punter, minus five. Again, no idea. <laughs> 
Locked, <laughs> locked into this one. Let's go. He's probably number one player in two. We got Wandale Robinson slipped to the sixth round. He's 68. Uh, and then I finished up the draft just going with depth. I got Micah McFadden from Indiana. He's 66 normal. And then I got the former great Oklahoma tight end transfer to SMU. Grant Calcaterra. Not a great rating. But is, is Arizona the, the top punter? Top player in this draft? I think he is. And we got number one true talent in the sixth round, baby. Let's go. That's what we need. That's the kind of missile. That's the kind of weapon that the Vancouver Grizzlies can absolutely need here. So one of the like, little bit of groundwork you gotta do before you start the season is get your scouting all in order. And we just need a new tier three scout, which is the big daddy. I'm not exactly sure what direction we wanna go. We have a keep to leave already on the staff. I'll show you the guys' the staff in just a sec. So I'm not against bringing another former player. Just trying to think what's, what would be the best investment. I'm, I'm yeah, Derek Johnson, former great, you know, Texas Longhorn, Kansas City Chiefs, middle linebacker. You know, we could always use more at middle linebacker. Singleton's there, but um, I think like D-tackle, Richard Seymour. Especially like the fact that D-tackle on a front three. It's like you're really getting th three spots because D-tackles can also be bumped out to defensive ends in your scheme. I think I'm going to bring another forward player. We're going to bring in Richard Seymour. So our current staff looks like this. Seymour, keep to leave. Uh, then we got a left guard center, just more so for the center. I, I feel like center's a spot we want to get a little bit more information on. Two defensive end spots here, Lulu Hernandez, and then Kyle Roberts trying to find the next Kelvin Benjamin. All right, so now the routine is pretty good. Uh, there's no real upgrades to be had during the preseason, so we're just going to sim through the preseason, hopefully get through it healthy and ready for week one on the road at Lincoln Financial Field. Let's take a look at our weekly strategy. Not so much how we're going to attack the preseason, but more so, what players do we want getting that little extra training boost throughout this season? I think it is very important to get our premier players on this department. So I think for sure we want Chuba Hubbard, especially that superstar. Actually, you know, the more that I think about it, the more it's like getting dinged for injury. I think someone like Trey Lance could be interesting because if he gets dinged with an injury, that, that could, you know, make for an interesting episode. And he's also a guy, unlike Chuba Hubbard, Needs, I mean, he needs more points, needs more overall, needs more stats because he didn't feel that great on the sticks. So we'll have the greatest, and I also don't think we can have a punter. He's already too damn good. Uh, let's go down here just a little bit. Uh, where's City Sal, that guard? That's a work in progress, has the dev trait right there. So I think he should be one. Gardner, John Mechie, Trey Lance, Kirkland has the dev. And that last spot, hmm... I think for this, um, so now it comes like, do you want someone that, that's, that's going to develop or do you want to get someone to have them develop quicker? Like a guy that's getting already good XP because he's playing for you. I think that's kind of the direction I want to go. And I'm going to throw this one. I, I think someone like someone like Neville Gallimore. Like it, you're going to find that pressure point of like, who's the best guy with a dev trait that's still young that can use the points? But also, if he gets injured from the weekly extra training and stuff like that, it's not going to be crippling to your team. I feel like Neville Gallimore fits that bill absolutely perfectly. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I would think, if I could think of something that's worth doing in this preseason, I would. But reality of it is, like, you know, what are we going to do, win some free agents or something like that? That's usually the rule we do in preseason, is that if you win your preseason game, uh, you can look at the free agency pool and try to improve your team there. Which, I mean, that, there could be some upgrades. You still look at our team base overall. We're still a 68 overall offense. However, I feel like if we just punt the preseason, we're not going to expose ourselves up to any loser wheels. So I feel like while we won't be gaining anything, we won't be losing anything. And given the state of our roster, I feel pretty good with that as we enter week number one. So to recap the preseason, a couple big upgrades from the training. A couple guys bust their ass. Three big starters for us. First, we have Trey Lance at quarterback. Pump him up here to a 78 overall in terms of boost, break sack, mid accuracy, short accuracy. Those are pretty nice upgrades for our superstar Ghana quarterback. We got Ben St. Juice, get him up to a scheme fit. Uh, what do we got for man to man here? Plus two man, plus one play rack. Cool, cool. And then Jalen Phillips, who I'm expecting to be big time, superstar type playmaker. 15, 16 sacks minimum. That is the goal we're setting. Got plus two finesse move. And he's, you know. That's big time right there. That's a guy. 86 speed, 89 acceleration, 85 finesse. Move. Back in the day when it actually felt like there was a difference between finesse and power moves, I was always a finesse guy. Always, always rocking and rolling with the finesse type players. And hopefully he can be the second coming. So our team, we got two preseason wins. That's probably, I, like, let's just kind of just see. Let, let's, 
you know, who did what. So we beat the Packers, lost the Rams, beat the Lions. So in our two victories, the Green Bay Packers, we had uh, more so for the Grizzlies. Vernon Adams, okay game. Chuba Hubbard had a touchdown there. Damian Pierce, 60 yards. Wandale Robinson, the rookie to Kentucky, touchdown right there. Defensively, a Gwoven big game. Look at the sacks. Urban with two, Phillips with two, a sack and a half. Eric Armstead, a sack for Singleton. Hell of a defensive performance in that first victory. And the loss on the Rams, a little bit more of a shootout. Dwayne Haskins, okay. Went off there a little bit. Two touchdowns and a pick for Lance. One and one for Vernon Adams. Run the ball. Damian Pierce rushing touchdown. Brandon Ayuk, 666. And a touchdown. We had Tuddies for Claypool. Wandale Robinson, two touchdowns. Okay, a little bit of a streak going on there. Uh, on the defensive side, Jalen Phillips had a sack. Continues the hot streak. But unfortunately, it's a loss. Preseason loss or not a loss is never fun. And then a really nice victory in the final preseason game over the Detroit Lions. 31 to 24. And in this matchup, we got uh, you know, single tutties for both Vernon Adams and Trey Lance. Tutties for both Damian Pierce. So Pierce looks real good as running back, too. He's been productive here in the preseason. Uh, Claypool, touchdown there. A clear with a touchdown. Wandale Robinson needs to be said. Also, fairly impressive. Like seeing that from our two young players on the offensive side of the ball having great preseason. Singleton tackle machine for us. Phillips got a sack in every single preseason game. Continues with the, the pressure of becoming that next great finesse edge rusher in the NFL. Armstead with the sack. Gallimore the sack. And Sauce Gardner, the rookie, our first round pick, gets an interception. Gets that little bit of confidence boost ahead of the week one game against the Philadelphia Eagles. I'll go 2-1 and one in the preseason. Would have been nice, maybe, if we, you know, knowing that we went two and one, but even if we just simmed them, knowing that we'd have two more free agents that we could have improved our team. But I'm not worried about it. Uh, what I am worried about is the fact that we're 74 overall, and at 75 overall, whenever we break that threshold, we're going to be at risk of losing players. But to cap this one all off, fellas, that is the Vancouver Grizzlies pink slips preseason. And we are, you know, one of the things too is our team's young. We have dev traits that like, we might even go up to that 75 threshold, not even by like winning a big time player. Could just be from players developing, which is, which I don't know, that's, it's, it's always feels a little bit better. It's like, all right, we're at risk of losing players now because we broke that 75 threshold. But we broke that 75 threshold because we got like Devontae Adams or something like that. And I'm worried about our offense, 69 overall, but I'm expecting quick turnaround. We'll definitely have that week, you know, the kickoff this season, probably this weekend. I'm going to get it out either Saturday or Sunday. And this is a final look at our roster as we gear up for year two. Uh, on the offensive line. Okay, this slight change. I don't like that. I hate I hate when it automatically just changes for you. Offensive line returns. And we throw in City Sal, the Canadian, and Jackson Kirkland on the right-hand side of the offensive line. Kelvin Benjamin looking to continue to be, like, the best player under 65 or below. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball, Trey Lance, I mean, su just generally surprised. He has a superstar depth, so that's exciting. Chuba Hubbard. We got Claypool, Brandon Ayuk. We're going to bump Mechie. I mean, we got to kind of keep Mechie at four because Palmer was solid last year. But we landed the Canadian John Mechie. Hidden dev out of Alabama in the draft. That was great. Also, keep an eye here on Damian Pierce at running back two. Takes a little bit of the pressure off Chuba Hubbard for this upcoming season. He had a great preseason, as did Wandale Robinson, the rookie out of Kentucky. Uh, but you can see uh, offense, still a work in progress. There's a reason why there's 6 down overall. The defense is the bell of the ball here. Front three, all devs. Linebacking core is pretty solid. I'm expecting big time progression for Jalen Phillips. Safety tandem, one of the best safety tandems in the league between Justin Reed and Holland. Caleb Farley and the Canadian Ben St. Juice. And then we throw in first round pick, Ahmad Sauce Gardner. Very excited to be able to land him. Big fan of him. Did not allow a single receiving touchdown in his college career. Hopefully that continues here in the pros. And then, hey, the fact that we just casually, you know, Dev Trait got the number one overall player in the draft, uh, the punter there from San Diego State, Matt Ariza. Ariza? Ariza? I'm going to figure out how to pronounce that properly. We're just going to call him Legatron. I'm going to take that name from Zuerlein and just give it to him, okay? This seems sick. We're feeling good. We're feeling great. We're going to get a bunch of victories, a bunch of big-time players. And hopefully sooner than later. But that'll do it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, if you're first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it is C4 saying peace out and thanks for watching.